Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Unfortunately, won't be able to do the 30 minute message today. Things got in the way and I ran out of time. And uh, kind of running out of time right now, but definitely gonna get in some message today. It's just gonna be one of the shorter ones. Hopefully the whole uh, part two of Donald Trump being president, what that means, my thoughts, who I voted for, blah, 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 will come out sometime within the next few days. I'm gonna try for tomorrow. I promise nothing, just in case who knows what happens. So, Second Chronicles chapter 7, we're gonna cover a very, very famous verse here tonight. I'm gonna start with verse 13. We're going to go into verse 14. Second Chronicles 7, 14 is incredibly popular. If you've been in the church for a few years, you've almost probably heard it. So Second Chronicles chapter 7, we're going to start at verse 13 and read verse 14 as well. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. It is a beautiful verse and a very powerful verse, and I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, that This is one of those Bible verses. It's not incredibly obscure. It's not. Uh, it doesn't require a huge deal of context, cultural understanding, intimate knowledge of the original language. It's just straight up right there. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, heal their land. It is beautiful. It is wonderful. And it's a reminder that God will blast your rear end if you're in sin. That part's not horribly, heavily emphasized in the church. Well, I want to emphasize it here for just a second. I feel like I've done this before on the channel, and I'm make no apologies for it, and in fact, I'm glad to do it again, and we'll probably do it several more times. Sin is a big deal. That's why Jesus died for us. That's why he was crucified on the cross, because of sin. The reason we come to God and pray to heal our sin, to forgive our sin, to heal our land, is because we've fallen into sin, because we are walking in wicked ways. And sometimes those things carry incredibly negative consequences. No rain, locusts devouring the land, pestilence among the people. So, no, not all the time when you're going through a hard time doesn't mean you're in sin. It doesn't always mean that. Job's friends made that mistake, and that's not always the case. However, if Christians don't put forth the message Sometimes sin has negative consequences. Sometimes when you're in sin, God will actively oppose you and punish you for those sins. If we don't announce that, we're not doing our job. So I'm here. I'm doing one of the more unpleasant sides of the Christian preacher bit. And I'm telling you, if you're in sin, you need to stop. Your sin will find you out. God does know what you're doing, and it may seem like he's far away, not paying attention. You may even think, well, God doesn't exist. Obviously, he doesn't look what I get away with. You won't always get away with it. And actually, if God, if God, I want to say if God has mercy on you and you never actually pay the price of that sin, that's kind of one of the worst things that could ever happen to you because you get comfortable and cozy in your sin, and you would never repent. And most of the time, vast majority of the time, you end up paying for that sin in one way or the other. That chest cold that you got, that stomach flu that you got, that, you know, the, maybe even something as severe as you're losing your home. A loved one is sick. A loved one is dying. Yeah, I'm hitting very close to home and I'm being very offensive. But the Bible covers stories like this. And again, I would be remiss in my duty if I didn't mention it. If you are in sin and if you're suffering some horrible thing, check your heart, check your mind, check your life. If you're in sin, you need to stop. If you're doing something against God, living in a way that is not pleasing to Him, yes, He can punish you even with the death of a loved one, something that severe. He killed David and Bathsheba's baby for David's adultery and murder. Now, those were pretty serious sins, and he carried an incredibly serious price. Now, I don't know what sin you're committing. I have no idea what may be happening in your life. I do know that God loves you, and in his mercy, he will whoop your rear end to bring you to repentance. And if you do something really messed up, God could do something incredibly messed up to you. 
to get your attention and to discipline you. So not the nicest of messages, but true nonetheless. And that verse which is so popular and so beloved by the church, let's keep in mind what it's about. It's about repentance. It's about turning away from sin. It's about turning to God and living a righteous, holy life, not a wicked, sinful, selfish one. Hopefully, I didn't lose a bunch of subscribers on this, but if so, I'll accept it because I don't take back these words and I don't apologize for them. The Bible says it, and for the third time, I would be remiss in my duty as a Christian to you if I did not proclaim this truth. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. The Donald Trump political video will be out very soon. Sorry it didn't come out today. Life, stuff, time. Ah. Thank you guys very much. I love you. God does too, even if you're in sin and there's still time for repentance. Please keep that in mind. That's what that verse is all about, the fact that you can repent. And God bless.